afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A very good evening to you all, and thank you so very much for your patience and for your time uh, this uh, uh, Friday evening. Uh, this is, the, I welcome you on behalf of the British Pakistan Foundation. My name is Sanya Qureshi. I'm the executive director, and I especially like to forward thanks to our very esteemed panel, many of whom have flown in from Pakistan um, to participate and share with you the great work that is being done within the NGO sector. Uh, to name a few of them, we have uh, Shweb Sultan Khan, who's the founder of RSPN in Pakistan, Saqib Hamid, who is the CEO of LRBT in Pakistan, Dr. Sanya Nishtar from Heartfile, which is another health-related NGO in Pakistan, and then we have three very uh, strong and very active medics from the British Pakistani community, include, including Dr. Mohammed Iqbal from Apps UK, Dr. Zafar Iqbal, who also works for Liverpool FC, and we also have, um, sorry, I've lost the, the most of Malik, sorry, from DFID, who's the director for West Asia DFID, who will be giving us a sort of overview of uh, British aid to Pakistan and how that's disseminated across health and education and other sectors. Just to reiterate, this is the third of our uh, series of roadshows. We were in Birmingham in July. We were in Bradford in September. This is our third roadshow, and our final will be in Glasgow in uh, December. And we look to the local communities in each of the cities to draw out the best practices, the best of the NGO sector from within community, and link that and uh, build those strategic relationships which are key for social development in Pakistan. So bringing practitioners from Pakistan and linking them, introducing those relationships to British Pakistani-run entities. So without further ado, I'd like to call up to the stage our chairman, uh, Mr. Asif Rangunwala, who's a, a die hand at philanthropy and uh, one of our sort of leading, leading partners in the British Pakistan Foundation. Thank you. Right, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I'd like to thank all the people from Manchester who took uh, this opportunity to come and be with us here this evening. Uh, we've been on a few road shows now, and slowly, slowly they're filling up, but we are a new organization, and I think as people get to learn more about us, I think the interest will grow. So just think of it that, you know, you people are here right at the beginning. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I want to thank all the speakers that have come from all over and um, I wanted to give you a little idea as to where BPF is coming from and what the objectives here are. Uh, BPF was originally, well, it originally started in the U.S. Uh, under a, 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 by the, by in the form of APF, the American Pakistan Foundation, <clears throat> about two, two and a half years ago, uh, one of our uh, the foreign minister at that time, uh, Mr. Shah, he decided that he would throw this idea open to the forum, to the diaspora here in Pakistan. And we took up the challenge and we decided that this was a good idea. It is not a charity. This is a organization which is trying to fill a gap which is required between existing Pakistani charitable or NGOs, which from what I understand, and we'll get a better idea as we collect more and more data, that you know there are over 650 Pakistani charitable NGOs in the UK, okay? So we don't need to be another one of them. <clears throat> what we do need to do is we need to fill this gap between identifying what the NGOs, or most of them that are doing here, with the prime objective of BPF, which is the socio-economic <laughs> development of Pakistan. First, I must uh, thank the British Pakistan Foundation for uh, uh, basically uh, giving uh, this kind of exposure to RSPN and, and personally uh, honoring me in this way. Uh, what I want to do just these 10 minutes that I have is that I think some time back in one of the Christmas speeches, the Queen said that in the olden days, no news was good news. Nowadays, good news is no news. 
I thought that I'll probably bring some good news from Pakistan just to tell you that what tremendous potential in the people there is and what they are able to do and what they are achieving. Uh, for example, this site that is in front of you, this was the first dialogue I held in uh, December 1982 in a village, Japuka, in northern Pakistan. And I said to them that, look, I have not come here to solve your problems. I'm not here to listen to what this program should do for you. I said that I have a tremendous belief and conviction that you have the potential to do things. And that is what we want this program to unleash. Asif talked about news on TV. When one thing I've noticed since I've been in the UK is that if you hear anything about Pakistan, it's always negative. NRBD is an organization which focuses on eye care and only on eye care. That's its speciality. And it has been described by Sight Savers International, which is also known as the Royal Commonwealth Society for the Blind, as the only national safety net for eye care uh, that the underprivileged have in Pakistan. And as you, my presentation goes along, you'll see why they said so. Pakistan, as you all know, is a desperately poor country. Two-thirds of the population lives below the poverty line. Um, their per capita income is on an average about 49 pounds, and two-thirds of which, uh, or 60% uh, of which is spent on food. And food inflation the last four years has been 79%. So just keep this as a backdrop. So whenever a medical emergency happens, it is catastrophic for the family. Um, given the tightness of the time schedule, I'm also going to be quite brief actually. I'm not going to do a long presentation or explain, give, give a lot of detail. There's a lot of material on our website. I'll just say a little bit about what DFID does and what we're trying to do in Pakistan, and also perhaps how you uh, can engage with us. Um, the first thing I wanted to just talk about briefly was what DFID is. Um, so DFID is the Department for International Development. It's the, the, the ministry in the British government that is responsible for managing your money. Uh, your money that's given abroad uh, in aid uh, uh, to address poverty. Um, we're accountable to parliament, like all government ministries are. We have a secretary of state who sits in the British cabinet. Uh, her name is Justine Greening, MP at the moment. Um, and like a lot of government departments, we have a legislative framework that governs what we do. Uh, in our case, it's the International Development Act. This was a legislative framework that was put in place uh, by the previous Labour government almost 10 years ago now. And the, the legislative framework that governs your uh, money, uh, that the British government manages on your behalf and commits overseas, is actually unique internationally because what it stipulates is that the primary purpose of UK aid overseas has to be to reduce poverty. Humanitarian and development issue in Pakistan which relates to medical impoverishment uh, because the state spends very little on the social sectors and health in particular. Uh, the public sector health facilities are in a dilapidated condition. The private sector is totally unregulated. The quality of care that is provided to people is really appalling. Uh, and when poor people like the ones that you saw or up on the images land in hospitals, they really have to go back home. They, they really are faced with three choices. They can either go back home and relinquish their assets and become impoverished or uh, be pushed, pushed further into poverty, or they can incur significant debt. And the third possibility is that they just forego care altogether. So with my own eyes, because I was trained, uh, because I worked in Pakistan, I saw that people were taken back home with broken legs. Uh, elderly women are constantly taken back home with broken yeah. hips. There just isn't the money there to pay for them. Now, technically, yeah. And theoretically, the state has a system in place. It's called Betul Mal. And the applications of such people ought to go to that institution, and that institution is supposed to help them. But in effect, and in practicality, that doesn't happen. Because there's a higher level of political patronage in the use of those monies. The system is highly inefficient, and there's institutionalized pilferage at all levels. So essentially, what we have done 
is no rocket science. We have created an alternative channel for such patients. Um, and what, so, in, so when a patient lands in a hospital with a dire situation, instead of sending the, the, the paper file to the Baitul Mal, they just send, the, send us an SMS. And from there on, the process is triggered and help is delivered um, within our promised time of 72 hours. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Sonia. And thank you, Chair Asif Rindunwala. My name is Dr. Muhammad Iqbal. I'm the chair of the organization, Association of Pakistani Physicians and Surgeons of UK. And here with me is the founder, Dr. Abdul Hafiz, uh, who founded this organization seven years ago, but this organization has taken the top care in the last two years. And in these last two years, we had uh, 3,000 members who have joined to us for the reasons, not only because we have provided them a social network, but actually we have provided them a social charity. By this I mean that not only we have provided them a platform where they can meet, they can mingle, they can enjoy, they can have fun, they can have uh, whatever things you can think of in a decent society, but also we provided them a platform where the good work can be done. BBF is, a, is, a, is my dream because three years ago I invited five charities and two chairs are sitting over here, Dr. Salim Khan, chair of IFMCH and Dr. Amir Ayub, chair of uh, uh, FEMS. And these two chairs were with me and we had five charities presenting on the day. So BBF is the dream come true for me. And I'm really thankful to you, Sonia, for that. You see, we are, we are beautiful minds. Beautiful minds in the sense that we'd like to bring um, health to a sick, a smile to a sick person's face. We work very hard. We work even 72 hour shifts. Sometimes we work one week without rest. We can be called upon on the day when it is the wife's wedding, birthday, it is a wedding anniversary, it's son's birthday, daughter's birthday, it can be any day, but we can't say no, we just have to go. We just have to go to save the life of a person, we just have to go to bring a smile on the face of a sick person. This is our life. So we really, we really need some fun also, some enjoyment also, some get together also. This is why we formed ABPS UK to have a platform where we can enjoy life, but at the same time, we decided that, yes, we will make sure something good comes out of this. For any structure, for any uh, economy, uh, three things are very important. The health, education, and social services. So we, as we are the medics, we are the experts on the medical um, specialties. So we thought, okay, let's have something on the medical side. But somehow it so happens that the boundaries are a bit gray. So we went into the education side on one, uh, one aspect and the social services on the other aspect. All the honorable guests, um, it's been marvelous to see uh, a lot more what's happening in Pakistan. And I agree with Sania, there's been a lot of apprehension even on our side in terms of how we go and who we work with and so on. Just to give you a little bit uh, background of the organization and uh, go through a few pictures and then uh, very quickly, I've been given only maybe three minutes. Organization has four main objectives. Uh, we work for doctors, uh, support doctors in this country as well as back home. We work for public health, uh, health awareness, uh, through seminars, through different activities which we're going to talk about as mentioned already and I'll just quickly <coughs> show you as well. Uh, our third objective is how we can do fundamental changes within the health infrastructure within Pakistan. Uh, in this country we have, I mean obviously we graduated from Pakistan, we know how the transition has been. We have seen both sides of the world. Uh, there are loads of skills which we have learned and our aim is uh, to transfer some of those skills which are transferable back home. Uh, so, and not only just the skills, we are also working in terms of what we can do sitting here, uh, changing the health infrastructure within Pakistan, uh, focus the resources at sites where we, we will get mass benefit. Just to give you an example, if you have whatever X amount of money, you build an extra ward in a hospital, the people who are beneficiary of that particular investment will be that village, uh, mahalla or whatever we, we call. Uh, but we have been targeting on areas where we invest the same amount of money but a much larger number of people benefit. Uh, and obviously I'll, I'll touch that in, in a second. Third area which we work, a fourth area we, we work in is the disaster management. So whenever there has been any calamity, we have sent a huge number of doctors. Uh, we have nearly four, four and a half thousand members worldwide. Uh, 
um, any doctor who is in uh, who is of Pakistani origin living living anywhere in the world can be a member. So obviously we, we inter interact with, with them. Jazakallah, thank you to the VPF for inviting me. I feel a little bit of a fraud compared with uh, certainly some of the other speakers. I've not achieved anywhere near as much as, uh, as what the other speakers have done. Um, I'm going to talk about, uh, and by the way, I've just got a message from a mum. I've got uh, exactly two minutes because she's very hungry. So I better make a quick move. So I'm going to talk about a problem which I think, uh, unfortunately, is uh, quite hidden and uh, a lot of people find embarrassing, but is a major problem both here in the UK among Pakistanis and in Pakistan. My usual job is looking after relatively uh, fit and healthy people. Uh, but as I said, today I'm going to talk about obesity. Just very quick, just to make sure that everyone's still awake. How many people are here, if you could show show of hands, how many people like biryani? Okay, keep your hand up if you like uh, samosa. Okay, and uh, glab jamin. Yeah, okay, it's all good. So uh, that's what you're going to get served anyway. So it's uh, that's good to know. Um, keep your hand up if you want obesity. No one? That's quite surprising. Uh, well, it's not. But it's, uh, if you continue eating those foods uh, on a regular basis, unfortunately, that's what uh, might end up. So what do we mean by obesity? I know there's lots of doctors here and they'll be uh, aware of this anyway. If you go to your uh, GP, they can give you an idea of what your ideal weight should be for your height. Okay, so you have different grades, but uh, Pakistanis have to be different. Okay, and those BMI charts don't work uh, necessarily for Pakistanis. And so what is a, a more accurate reflection is your waist circumference. So everyone should know what their waist circumference is. And if you actually reach underneath your chairs, there's actually a tape measure uh, underneath there and you can actually find out right now. Um, so as I said, this is going to be quite depressing news for some people. For Asian men, the maximum your waist circumference should be is 36 inches. And sorry ladies, uh, for women the maximum should be 32 inches. Okay. So if it's more than that, unfortunately, you have much higher risk of heart disease, diabetes, and obesity. It's very, very simple. Okay, you get obesity because of the fact that if you eat more than what you burn, your weight will increase. All right? And I'm sure everyone participates in the minimum amount of physical activity. So for adults, we should be doing 30 minutes five times a week. Okay? And for children, 60 minutes every day. Okay, but the problem is in this country, not enough people are, so nearly 70% of adults and kids are not doing enough physical activity, so what's happening there? Uh, well, England may not be doing very well in cricket and football, but one thing that we can be proud of is that we have the fattest women in the whole of Europe. <laughs> no round of applause for that. Uh, and uh, if we look at men, we're only in second place, so we've, we've still got a little bit of catching up to do. So this is uh, in the UK. Our world standing, okay, we, at the moment we, we hold the bronze medal position. USA holds a gold medal position for obesity. Uh, for actual Pakistan, we're way down. So if you look at the, the recent figures from Forbes, we're about 165 out of 194 countries. Say 
Child. 